Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some family drama, am I the a-hole posts that got me fired up. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter-in-law she wasn't invited due to her weight? I already don't like where this is going. All rise for the Honorable Judge Howard. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? I mean, I'm not the one on trial here, but I shall. I will try to keep this short. I've got three girls and we like to do girls trips for the day. My son got married to a girl named Beth. Now before her kids, she was average weight and after it got a lot worse. Her only kid is eight years old at this point and she hasn't lost the weight. I am sensing a little bit of fat phobia here, just a little bit. It's bad enough that she needs constant breaks walking. I don't like the way you're wording this, I'm not gonna lie. I used to like her and now I don't due to how she acts. Everywhere we go with her, it's constant complaining that she is tired. Okay. The last girl's trip to the mall was spent sitting on a bench half the day since she needed the constant break. And if you try to leave, she will go on about abandoning her. It's annoying. Okay, yeah, I could, I could see how that would get annoying, yeah. Hmm. Okay, this is, this is gonna be a tough one. This is a tough one. I invited the girls to go to a farm for pumpkin patch and pick some apples. It has big orchards and a ton of walking. We went, it was a great time, and some pictures went on Facebook. I got a call from Beth asking why she wasn't invited. I lied, saying it was just a family trip, and she accused me of lying. I had enough and told her the truth. I told her she wasn't invited due to her weight. I feel like you could have worded that better, you know? Like, I feel like, mm, like, mm. Yeah. That she forced us to stop all the time and it ruins trips most days and we don't get to do half the stuff. She called me a jerk and hung up. I'm getting texts from my mom saying to apologize, but the girls are on my side and sick of having trips ruined since we have to wait for her all the time. Okay, so wait, so is she like, is she like obese? She is obese, her ankles are swollen from her weight. The connection between her weight and not walking far without a break is very obvious, okay. I feel like this is going to upset some people, but the fact of the matter is, there is such a thing as being a little bit overweight while still being active. It is very important to be active, to get a little bit of walking in every single day. It is good for you. It's good for your health, it's good for your mental health, and it's, you know, it's low impact. It doesn't really hurt your body so much, but it does get that heart rate up and it is good for you. If she can't even go like, you know, 20 minutes without getting tired, like to me, if you, if you can't even do like a shopping trip and get tired, okay, listen, I can't do hikes cause I get tired, all right? Shopping is my cardio. I can walk around a mall. <laughs> if you can't even walk for an extended period of time without getting tired, I feel like that is a sign that we gotta, we gotta start being a little more active, you know? And this is not to say anything about her weight. There's plenty of people who are overweight who are still active. It's important, it's healthy to do so, and it's unhealthy to just sit around all the time. It's literally the worst thing for your health to just sit around all the time. However, I feel like you could have worded that better. I feel like saying it's, it's about the fact that you're fat, it's your weight, it's not her weight, it's her behavior that's affecting your outings and your ability to do your own exercise and your time with your daughters. It's like it, her weight is indirectly, but kind of directly affecting everybody else. Mm. Tricky, 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 tricky. We're all about body positivity here. You don't gotta be a size zero for me to f with you. I love my big girls. We gotta make sure that we're, you know, staying healthy, that we're taking care of ourselves. Big fan of taking care of yourself, always. You're not the a-hole in my eyes, but you also could have worded that better. Let's see what everybody else had to say. At the risk of being called fat phobic, good for you, not the a-hole. Why should your trips revolve around her? Why should you be forced to plan outings that are within your daughter-in-law's step limit? Finally, you're free to only invite your actual daughters to things too. That is true. You aren't blocking her from any and all family gatherings. She just got blocked from this one, which I hope is the first of many trips you and your daughters have been putting off for her sake. Get out there and see the world. It is lovely. OP responds, I'm so tired of going somewhere and half the time is spent sitting on a bench. I want to do things, not sit around. Adding, you would have been better to just say this. After all, it's ultimately not about her weight. This is what I'm saying. It's about her behavior, which is indirectly caused by her weight. You could have directly addressed the behavior without the fat shaming. That's, yeah. I do think that you could have worded that better. I understand maybe tensions were high in that conversation. It is what it is. She's not too fat, she's too 
inactive. Won't call you the a-hole though, because you have a good point. You just could have delivered it better. I completely agree. Okay, OP responds, my daughters have done that before. It's not getting through. I'm also sick of lying and coddling to her. We all know it's her weight. I was already pissed that she's asking why I went out with her, then being called a liar. The truth seems so much better in that moment. But truth is you didn't invite her because she isn't physically capable of doing the activities that you planned. Period. It doesn't matter the root cause. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's not about her weight. Unless maybe it, there is a little bit of, you know, fat shaming in there, in which case maybe for you it's about the weight. But I feel like this is more about her behavior affecting everybody else's plans and ability to do any sort of physical activity. I also don't like that she's like stopping you guys from, from doing physical activity. Like she won't just like let you go and do your own thing while she takes a rest. Like that to me is like, mm, you know, you're not the a-hole my dear, but you could have worded that better. I feel like there's like a new rating system it says not the a-hole poo mode. <laughs> Does that mean you're not the a-hole, but you're kind of an a-hole. Am I the a-hole for giving my late husband's estate to a stranger instead of our kids? I, 55 female, had been married to my husband, male 60, for 20 years before he died. It was cancer. He had two kids from a past marriage who were in their early teens when he married me. I had a seven year old from an early relationship as well. We didn't have any more kids. I tried to treat my stepchildren as my own, but they never accepted me. They were very rude and insulted me whenever they could. Since I did not work, they called me a gold digger who married their dad only for his money. I'm sorry, and what do they do for work? Like, do they do anything or are they just Nepo babies? <laughs> I feel like you're only allowed to say that if you also bring something to the table. The truth was my grandparents were quite wealthy and left me a ton of money when they died. Okay, so she's independently wealthy too. I lived well below my weens and well below my weens. <laughs> I live below my weens. I lived well below my means and chose to stay home and raise my daughter since I could afford that. I did not need his money at all, but I didn't bother sharing this with the kids and told him not to either. I did not want them to like me just because they might gain monetarily from me. Oh. Well, this just got interesting. My husband, on the other hand, hated how they behaved with me. Their blatant disrespect made him not pay for their college tuition. Their mom couldn't pay for it and they had to take loans for it. They didn't even talk to him. Even when he got cancer, they refused to come and see him. Oh, hell no. Spoiled little brats. For three years, we struggled with the treatment. My daughter came to visit from time to time when she could. During this time, the only person who really helped us was someone we were not related to at all. This girl in her late 20s, waitress at a cafe we frequented. She was a single mom taking classes at community college at night, working during the day and raising her two kids. She took a liking to us. And when she learned my husband was sick, spent whatever time she could visiting him. She stayed nights at the hospital when I needed a break and basically was the daughter we wished for. I mean, hopefully uh, it was out of the goodness of her heart and she didn't smell the money there, but I digress, we shall find out. When he died, she helped me arrange the funeral. His kids came on the day and all they wanted to know was about their inheritance. Oh brother, nothing, you get nothing. Zero zip. Honestly, the entitlement. Speaking as someone who has dealt with deaths in the family and everybody coming together at the end to pick up the scraps, it's definitely an awkward thing. It's not easy to deal with, especially when you realize how crazy family members get about money, especially at a time when we should be grieving. When I learned my husband left his estate to me, whatever's left after settling his bills, and it was around $25,000, I decided to give it to the girl who helped us both so much. She tried to refuse, but I insisted that she take it. She needed it, and in my opinion, deserved it more than the ungrateful children. Ooh, they're not gonna like that. My daughter understands why I didn't give it to his children, but is upset I didn't give anything to her. I told her she already had money and a job, not to mention she will get my inheritance. This was in no way her money. Yeah, I could, I could see that, I could see that. Oh gosh, it's just a sticky situation, eh? Just like inheritance, Ooh, stay away. His ex-wife and kids are causing havoc over this and really upset with me. They are calling me the a-hole for giving away money they deserve. No, 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 you don't deserve anything. You are not entitled to anything. When you walk through life biting the hand that feeds you, how can you really be surprised when things don't go your way? 
If they were smart, they would have tried to maintain a relationship with you at the very, very least. Or go see their father when he was in the hospital dying of cancer. You know, you're not the a-hole in my eyes, but let's see what everybody else had to say. They don't deserve the money. They want the money. There's a difference. I just went no contact with my parents literally two to three days ago. I know the odds are they will cut me out of their will. That's the thing, right? It's as simple as that. Don't got a good relationship with your parents. You got to be willing to kind of be cut out of the will. If you don't need the money, then fine. But if you do, <laughs> I mean, you dumb as hell. I'm 100% okay with being cut out of the will. Being free of their toxicity is 100% worth giving up the money they may have given me. In all honesty, I don't know how I will feel if they do leave me money in their will. Do I even want to accept it? I honestly don't know. Taking the money won't fix the damage they caused. His adult children made choices in life, but now that he's gone, now that all of it is said and done, and now they're demanding money. I would look at them and say, aren't you quite the gold diggers? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that just tickled my fancy. All the British people are going, man, you said fanny, Charlie, you tickling your fanny. Fancy, not fanny. The fancy was tickled with that line. Well done. You're not the a-hole, my dear. Moving on. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents that if they give my brother money, I will stop giving them money? God, family and money. They certainly don't go together, do they? My female 32 brother 35 is trash, trash. He has multiple baby mamas and is a deadbeat. He's also the apple of my mom's eye. He can do no wrong and is just misunderstood. Give me a break. My parents are retired and on a fixed budget. I do well for myself and I help them out. I give them maybe $500 a month to help with groceries and bills. Oh no, oh no. Every once in a while, I'll give them an extra for an unexpected expense. No questions asked. My mom asked me for $2,000. I sent it to her. Strangely enough, I ran into my brother at a family wedding. I had been told he could not afford to attend because it was a destination wedding. Weird. Funny story, he actually missed the wedding because he hooked up with a rando on an excursion and went to their resort. Oh yeah, so that he just wanted a nice little free vacation there, eh? It was my cousin's wedding and my aunt was pissed. She had to make special arrangements to get him included on the trip since he only got the money last minute. She said my mom shouldn't have given him the money if he wasn't even going to show up. So your brother is 35 years old and still accepting money from your parents. Do I have that correctly? How are you not embarrassed? Ugh, brother. Literally, oh brother. I enjoyed the wedding and we had a great time. When I got home, I went to see my parents. I asked my mom why she asked for the $2,000. I asked my mom why she had asked for the $2,000. She lied and said something for the house. I asked what? She couldn't say. Ugh. I told her what my aunt said. I told her and my father that from now on, I wanted receipts for any money I gave them. I said, I have no problem helping them, but I will be damned if I work my ass off for her to give my money to my piece of uh -huh. brother. She started crying and my dad said they weren't children and didn't answer to me. I mean, they do when you're the one that's giving them the money. That's your money, babes. I agreed and walked out. I didn't talk to them for two months. My aunt called me yesterday and told me that my parents were thinking of going to the food bank since they didn't have any money. I said I had given them $2,000 a couple of months ago, and that was more than my family of three spent on food at that time. She said I knew damn well they had given my money to my brother. I told her he should probably pay them back then. She said I was being a Am I the a-hole? I really hate it when people hold the whole like, but we're family thing over your head. I think that your brother has just gotten so used to everybody just bending to his will, giving him money, that it's created an entitlement in him where he doesn't feel the need to get a job. I, I'm assuming he doesn't really have a job because he can't afford to uh, go on a vacation with you guys and your parents are secretly giving him money. But by kind of coming to his rescue all the time, you're essentially saying that he doesn't ever have to screw up or work for it on his own because there will always be someone that will swoop in and save him. That is not how we raise healthy adults, my friends. Not sure how much raising can be done still since he's 35 <laughs> and still taking money from his parents who also can't afford to live. Like, how are you not embarrassed? 
How are you not embarrassed that you are taking money from your parents who now have to go to a food bank? I'm still confused as to why your parents still think he's like this golden child that can do no wrong when he put them in this situation. OP, you are not the a-hole, your parents are. They've created this monster and now you're supporting him. They're using you as a cash cow. Yes, it's true, they don't answer to you, but if you're footing the bill, then they damn well better tell you where the money is going. Receipts! I need a receipt. The audacity for them to say, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not a child. Me. Okay, yeah, you're not a child, but like also, I gave you that money. And your aunt calling you a b is funny. If she cares so much about your parents, she should be footing the bill. Oh, there you go. There's a little uh, plot twist I approve of. Which I highly doubt because people are always one to talk but never to sign the check. Stand your ground and let them suffer a little so they understand. They won't die over eating some food from the food bank for once. Ain't nothing wrong with the food bank. They had $2,000 in cash last month and what did they do with it? I am like so surprised that they're mad at you. Like, I would be so mad at that son for putting them in that situation. I can't imagine the nerve the parents have giving the lazy brother $2,000 of your money to attend a destination wedding and he doesn't even show up at the wedding. This entitlement at its finest, babes. It's not his money, so it doesn't matter how he spends it. This is what happens when lazy people are given other people's money. They don't treasure it. They don't appreciate it. They waste it. I'm all about taking care of the people that are close to you. If you enjoy a little bit of success, you gotta share it with the ones that you love. I've always been of that opinion and honestly, just getting to the point where I'm able to like give back is something that I'm very, very, very happy about. Like that is like one of the best things about like getting a little bit of financial security is getting to take my parents out for dinner and getting to help my brother and, and you know, helping my friends with their ventures and stuff like that. Like that to me makes me very, very happy. But, but, I have noticed that as you start to give a little bit, they always come back for more. And not only that, they're a little less grateful every single time. So by all means, help the people around you. Take care of your parents. They took care of you growing up. But just be mindful though, that when you give an inch, people take a mile. You are not the a-hole, my dear. Subscribe!